So you have no doubt heard that Joe Biden is leading in the polls. You have also no doubt been reminded that Hillary Clinton led in the polls in 2016. So what can we take from that? How does 2020 compare to 2016? One man has the answer. Joining me now is CNN senior politics writer and analyst Harry Etten. Harry, I was hoping for this to be the sort of official televised explanation of how 2020 compares to 2016. Let's start with the top line number as we sit here right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how official it will be, but here's the situation. Take a look at where the polls are right now and compare it to where they were in 2016. Look, Hillary Clinton was ahead at this point uh, back in 2016. She was up by six points. But look at where Biden is right now. He's up by 10 points. More than that, look at that. He's above 50 percent. Hillary Clinton was well below 50 percent. And that essentially means that even if Trump wins all the late deciders, those undecided voters, he still won't get enough to catch up to Biden versus where we were four years ago, where all really Trump needed to do was win those late deciders. And he did. And that's why he won the presidency. And underneath those top line numbers, we are also seeing some things that are very different when it comes uh, to support among some subgroups. Yeah, I mean, take a look here among white voters and white voters without a college degree. Both of those groups favored Trump fairly heavily in 2016 in the final pre-election polls. And look at the margins now. Look, Trump's still ahead with both of those groups. But among whites, the lead went from 13 to 2. Among non-college white voters, Trump won those by 30. He's only ahead right now by 18. And that transforms itself into some key swing states, right, like Iowa and Ohio, Ohio, a place that uh, Joe Biden was visiting just yesterday. Look at that. Back in 2016, Trump won that state by eight. Right now, Joe Biden's ahead by one there. Iowa, Trump won by nine. Now Biden's ahead by two. So Biden is the one who is expanding the map. He is on offense. Yeah, this is really key because it explains why Joe Biden was in Ohio yesterday and why the president's going to Des Moines, Iowa. Those are not the types of things you saw, by and large, four years ago. Again, a key difference. Also a key difference, you know, we had David Gregory on earlier in the show, and Allison asked, are we seeing more of an anti-Trump vote or a pro-Biden vote? There are some signs that Biden has done well for himself recently. Yeah, I mean, you know, I often hear people say, oh, people are just voting for Biden because he's the anti-Trump. Here's the facts. If you look at the numbers, you actually see that Joe Biden is a well-liked individual compared to where Hillary Clinton was four years ago at this point. Look at this. Joe Biden's favorable rating, 53 percent. His unfavorable rating, just 41 percent in the recent average of polls. Compare that to Clinton, who was very much disliked. Her favorable rating was 42 percent. Her unfavorable rating, in fact, was over 50 percent. And that essentially meant that all Trump needed to do was win the groups of voters who didn't like either candidate. He won those won that group by 17 points in the exit polls. Right now, even if Trump wins the voters who don't like either candidate, that won't be enough because Biden's favorable rating is over 50 percent. And that is a huge difference. Trust also a big difference, Harry. Yeah, I mean, look, Donald Trump is going to, the president's going to say a lot of weirdo things over the next final three weeks, right? We, we heard it last night at his rally. He says a lot of things about the coronavirus. But the fact of the matter is, when it comes to the honest and trustworthy issue, look at this. Who do you believe is more honest and trustworthy? Joe Biden in our recent CNN poll with a 25 point lead on who is more honest and trustworthy. Compare that to four years ago where Trump was the one who actually had that slight honesty edge. So as we enter into the final few weeks and the two candidates are basically going to say that candidate's not telling the truth. Right now, Joe Biden's the one who most voters believe is telling the truth. And it's a big reason why he's ahead. Trump had an edge on honesty four years ago. Think about how much has changed. Uh, during his time in office. Also, when it comes to the biggest issue of the day, Harry, you're seeing some stuff there. Yeah, I think this is rather important, right? It's not just about personalities, right? It's about issues and who you trust most on them. Obviously, the big issue of the day right now is coronavirus, but essentially Gallup asked late last month, who do you trust more to handle the nation's most important problem? They basically said, what is the nation's most important problem and which party do you trust more to handle it? Right now, Democrats hold an eight-point lead on that particular question. Now, compare that to 2016, where Republicans, in fact, held a four-point advantage. So when it comes to the personalities and when it comes to the issues, we're just, just not seeing the picture that we saw in 2016. Right now, Democrats are ahead on the, on the personalities, on the trust, and on the most important problem. And when you add that all together, that's a big reason why you're seeing Joe Biden with a much bigger lead than Hillary Clinton had. And look, it's three weeks to go until people can finish voting. We don't know what will happen, but I think people have such selective memory 
about 2016. They remember that Donald Trump was losing in the polls overall, but what they don't remember, and I think what you just pointed out so successfully, Harry, he had a lot going for him. He had a lot of advantages underneath those numbers there that ultimately prevailed on Election Day. They don't exist as we sit here today.